Here we have a 54-year-old female who comes to the emergency ward with chest pain and tachycardia. Now, obviously, we'll draw blood and look at all the different parameters to exclude coronary artery disease, maybe even pulmonary embolism. But what if you just perform an echocardiography very early on before you even get the lab results back? Here is the echocardiogram. Now, you might not appreciate the problem already in the parasternal long axis view, but if I show you the four-chamber view here, it's clearly a dilated right ventricle which you're seeing. It's a rather large right ventricle, much larger than the left ventricle. Now, there is no right ventricle hypertrophy, which practically excludes that this is a chronic problem. Now, if you look at the TR velocity, you will see that it's also not very high. We have a velocity of maybe 3.5 meters, 3.4 meters. Now, how does this all fit together? Clearly, this is a patient who has acute pulmonary embolism. In such a situation, as you now already know, patients cannot generate such high pressures. Therefore, you will very rarely see very high TR velocities. And the typical feature of pulmonary embolism is a dilated right ventricle without right ventricle hypertrophy. In this situation, we can also say that there is some form of hemodynamic impairment. In other words, the right ventricle is suffering from pulmonary embolism. So she is at least in an intermediate risk of developing a problem in the spectrum of her pulmonary embolism. Of course, we brought her to radiology and performed a spiral CT of the lung, and definitely we confirmed this there. She had bihilary pulmonary embolism and uh, was treated sufficiently. But I think this example just so beautifully shows you how quickly you can get the diagnosis with the help of echocardiography, how you can assess the prognosis, and how you can actually help your patient very early on.